I sold my Mavic Mini 2 and I've upgraded to the Mavic Mini 3. What I loved most about the Mavic Mini 2 is how compact and lightweight it was. It was an absolute breeze traveling with that drone. The image quality, the video and the photos, especially the photos out of the camera of the Mavic Mini 2 weren't as good, but it was a sacrifice that I was prepared to make so that I didn't have to carry around an extremely heavy drone such as the Mavic 3. So here we go, the Mini 3, it's fresh out of the box. So I just wanted to dedicate today to flying this drone for the first time and then just giving you guys my first impressions on it. I also went for the RC package with the remote control with the screen in it. So this is actually one of the things that I'm most excited about trying out. Gone are the days that you have to bring a phone with you, make sure it's fully charged at all times, like going through the whole ordeal of plugging it in. And if you've ever used any of DJI's drones in the past, you know what I'm talking about. I'm also excited to see if this little guy is any better than the previous generation. I have a suspicion it will be, but the question is how much better is it? Also, if you are wondering, I didn't get the Fly More kit. I'm not sure why I didn't get it when it got announced. I guess I just forgot, but I probably will pick up two extra batteries or just get the Fly More kit uh, really, really soon. And I was hoping for blue sky, but in the last half an hour, a massive sheet of cloud has come over. So I guess we're just gonna have to deal with this weird, glary, overcast weather. We gotta do a firmware update first, but it, it seems like a very important firmware update. So um, optimized flight stability, improved image quality. I think we probably want those things, right? Okay. So I had to take a little bit of a break to charge up the single battery that I have for the drone. It took about an hour. I'm gonna fly the drone again. The weather's a little bit different now. It's definitely more cloudy and there's a little bit more wind around. So it should be interesting.
framing is kind of cool. I didn't even intend to do that. Okay, two flights down with the Mavic Mini 3 and I'm really happy with this drone. I definitely will be keeping it. I think we all already knew that the portrait orientation would be awesome. I think it's something that because we had it on the original Mavic Pro, that we kind of just took for granted at the time and they took it away and now it's back and it's like, whoa, this is awesome. For everyone who's interested in the quality of this drone, I will be leaving a couple of raw files linked down in the description. And for the channel members, I will be giving you guys all of the raw files that you guys saw in this video. Now, it's not crazy windy today. You guys probably could have seen when I took off that there was a little bit of wind, but the drone in the air looked really, really stable through the camera. Usually when there's a little bit of wind, you can see the propellers. You can kind of see a little bit of movement from time to time. I didn't get any strong wind warnings at all despite going all the way to the 150 meter altitude limit and I was just playing with these three modes on the controller so you've got the cinematic the normal mode and the sport mode on the mini 2 when you go into sport mode and you floor it like you go straight ahead or back uh, the gimbal does this like weird tilt when it's uh, tilted down um, so it can't quite maintain its tilt angle I didn't notice any movement of the gimbal at all when using the Mini 3, even when I was in sport mode, even when I was going full throttle. So that's actually really cool. In terms of how long the battery actually lasts in the air, I think overall I definitely got a little bit more flight time. Whether or not you notice it when you're in the air with the standard batteries, not really. It kind of felt like I got a similar flight time with the Mini 2. I'm really excited to get my hands on those uprated batteries, the ones that can last for like 45 minutes or whatever it is. So as soon as I get my hands on one of those, I'll be testing that out as well. On the bottom of the controller here, you can see these two custom buttons. Now, just before I went and took off for the second time, I was going to customize these. Um, because I didn't use them before I was just using the screen to change the settings and whatnot by default One of them is set to change from portrait orientation to landscape and the other is set to just recenter the gimbal And when I saw that it was already set to that I was like perfect That's exactly what I want So I would just leave the control settings at default that worked really well for me But obviously if you want to set it up a different way, that's up to you Also, I will say with this controller it took me a little bit of time to get used to this dual setup here. So on this side of the controller, you have the photo button and on this side, the video. So there's actually separate buttons to start video and photo. And also when you're switching between the modes, you just press either one that you want to select. That's going to take me a little bit of time to get used to. Another thing straight out of the box is I would definitely change the sensitivity of my gimbal rotation. It was a little bit too fast. Uh, thankfully, cine mode helps a little bit. I was probably using cine mode most of the time when I was filming the video. When the sun was out this morning, I had to have my back turned to the sun in order to see the screen. And while I was charging the battery, I made a mental note to check the brightness of the screen and make sure it was at its maximum level. So when I got down here to the beach, I think on the controller you like pull down and then you swipe from the corner, much like an iPhone. Uh, if you've got an iPhone, you'll probably know if you just swipe from the corner, you get like this control panel. It's very, very similar on the RC. And then there is actually a slider where you can increase the brightness. I'm not sure if that's automatic, but it was set to about 50% this morning. I obviously put it all the way to 100%. I think that you should definitely do that because I don't think you need to charge this control all that often. I'm fairly certain this would last quite a long time. So having the brightness all the way up is definitely helpful when you're in brighter environments and you need to see the screen. So on the way back I made sure I went and picked up one of these because the controller can actually take a micro SD because you can record screen recordings to it so I thought right, why not have one in there just in case it's only 30 bucks so why not I'm really excited to take this drone on my next trip I will be recording all kinds of cinematic footage and photos and I'm really looking forward to making a montage of all those shots so you can definitely look forward to that. Make sure you get subscribed if you don't want to miss out on that. I am going to enjoy the rest of the day down here at the beach. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Remember to make a story worth telling and I will see you guys in the next video.